keep moving on talking about this. Now that we got this trucking company up, we got a license, we have a system in place, you know, that truck's running down the road. Um, we talked a little bit, you know, about fuel and IFTA and all that, but talk about options with fuel. I mean, obviously that's a huge cost. You just talked about that, keeping it, you know, trying to keep it below 25%, but that's, you know, fuel and I mean, all of us consume fuel in our vehicles. I mean, unless you have only electric car, but talk about the options to look at fuel and more, more importantly, fuel management on that truck. Um, well, this is a good time to be in a small company. And it used to be unheard of that the big boys, pilot, Sap brothers, Iowa 80 would call a small company offering a cost plus deal. They're offering those deals now. Yeah. Directly to small companies. Directly to small companies. In our case, I refuse to make a gallon commitment because our lanes are so outside the norm. You know, you're going through more rural America than interstate America, so there's not the big name fuel stops always available. So that even the fueling commitments that went to the wayside, we just want your business. So we'll give you this cost plus arrangement. One of those is almost 60 cents below the street price. As a small company, you can't beat that. And when you talk about that, they're offering basically cost plus, so that's their cost plus, plus a, you know, a few cents. Or what they're stating to be their cost. Or maybe a little pee in the shell game there, you know, it's marketing. And it's justifiable, it's legal. But yeah, what they state is cost plus, a, you know, a few cents. Usually it's cost plus three, five, seven, whatever they think. They can get away with. So that's working directly with fuel stops. There's also fuel card companies. One that we always recommend again for a lot of people, the mud flap app. And it's not even necessarily a fuel card, but it's a, it's an app. Well, and I think that is what has put the pressure on, on these the big names to do it. Because right now I'll go ahead and drop a name out here. Sap brothers. If you're in, in their lanes, uh, Sap brothers is actually giving a deeper discount than any mud flap transactions giving right now. Oh, wow. If you're in their cost plus deal. But that's another option if you're not in that lane. You know, obviously yeah. SAP's here in the Midwest, but if you're running out well, of their network and all that, there's another, that's another option that you can use. You mud know, flap, and it's an, oh, well, I just want to say kind of mud flap the way it works. Um, it's an app, but you put, you some, put your debit card or credit card in there. You typically fill up at full price. And then they rebate you back a certain discount later on. I mean, they, they tell you what the discount's going to be, whether it's, 20 cents off or 17 cents off. Well, they only bill you for the discounted price now. We play around with it for a couple of our trucks. Yep. Uh, actually, Benny uses it and entire rail uses it. Uh, the the thing that Mudflap did is they said, hey, I'm just going to throw a number out there. I got 25 subscri uh, 25,000 subscribers here that's using our app. And th that's how they go into individual and chains and say, hey, we want a fuel discount. You can't turn away business. So they're going to get the discount. So that put pressure on the big fuel providers, traditional, you know, to trucking that, you know what, if we want to stay relative to the small fleets, we're going to have to do this too. Because the simple fact is, if you look at registrations, the small companies are still the biggest piece of the pie. Mm. So that's another option is, is talking about that. But I guess overall, in starting a business like, um, there are opportunities out there to get fuel below the retail price. Oh, absolutely. And, and, and you should always be using some kind of tool, whether the fuel card or some kind of program. Well, I recommend more than one. I yeah. Mean, yeah. You know, Using around, have, you don't have to be, yeah. Wherever now, you when you got a fleet discount. of drivers, that may be tricky because you don't want to have, you know, you're throwing a lot at a person that's already having to operate a piece of equipment going down the road weighing 80,000 pounds or in some states more. And so they already got enough on their shoulders, so you want to keep it simple. But, yeah, you know, I, I recommend more than one fuel payment option. You know, in traditional fuel cards, we run two. And, and then, again, you know, we are, we're dabbling in mud flap. I think, too, I've talked to guys, and especially if you're in rural America, but even talking to the mom and pops, and maybe it's just a – a one fuel stop operation. But a lot of times if you talk with them and let them know that, Hey, I'm, I'm going to be filling up X amount of gallons here every week or month. They're likely to give you a discount. Directly. Normally that happens when you operate in a, a confined area. 
or you have enough trucks in that area, most of the time a small company will work out a deal with a neighboring fuel stop. They'll set up an account and, you know, they'll get preferential treatment and prices and whatever the credit limit is. And to be the exclusive fuel provider for that fleet, you know, at least on their close in operations. And you can, you can score significant down, uh, discounts that way too. Yeah. So that's enough on fuel. Um, let's talk a little bit about safety and compliance. Um, and that's a big one. I know it's not directly in your wheelhouse, but um, a big thing, if you're getting in a trucking, typically you're going to have to have, why well, I should say typically um, you'll have to have some kind of ELD device, right? On that truck. If it's newer than 2000, you got to have an ELD. And ELD stands for electronic logging device. It's been mandated by the FMCSA. Basically, it's a device that that hooks into your truck and your system, and it basically... Yeah, it monitors the ECM of the truck, what controls the engine and other uh, functions of the truck to make sure that the driver is in compliance with the hours of service rules. You know, as much as it aggravates people, and especially in bulk commodity hopper, that's almost a thank you. Because if you looked at rates prior to 2017 and after, and I'm talking before pandemic, there was a significant increase in rates for hopper traffic hmm. post ELD than it was pre ELD. Because they expected you to just move the lines around in your logbook to keep everything going. Now that's not possible. So, you know, and uh, another thing the ELD and Hopper has, you know, pre-2017, we had two customers that would consistently paid attention. Now it's almost all of them. There used because to be one. ELD? Yes, and there used to be one of them that would never pay attention. Now that was probably post-ELD and post-pandemic combined that would never paid attention in the yard. So in that aspect, the most important thing to pull a benefit out of it is that the ELD has put a price tag on time, a firm price tag. You know, it's not a matter of a broker or a shipper telling you, you know what, you can, you can fudge things a little bit. You can get that load there on time, no matter. So what if you had to sit here in line waiting for your load four or six, eight hours? Now they don't have that option because the company doesn't have that option. Yeah. A lot of people, again, if you're not in the industry, you may not know this, but, you know, it used to be, and it's still a big thing that plagues the industry detention, but basically, you know, truck arrives a receiver, and if he's there more than, you know, it's an hour free, and there's different, you know, people have different ones, but, like, sometimes if that guy's there in over an hour, then that company should be paying that truck for every hour that he's there, right? Uh, the, Additional hour. The industry standard is two, but... You know, that fluctuate. There's some that will pay, you know, after an hour. Those are rare. Uh, you get in the agribusiness side of it, and you got to fight a little more. But you usually, after a truck sat somewhere three hours, you usually can get what you need out of the truck or at least something, and something is better than zero. 